Whose birthday is it tomorrow? Yours. Morning, y'all. It's coffee time. Answer to yesterday's question, can Tiger Woods win a major? Most people say no, which I would understand. The only person who really knows the answer to that question is him. I think he believes he can, otherwise he wouldn't even compete, he's that kind of guy. I hope he can, not sure he can. Today's question, as everyone was so scared to answer the plane question, if you swing what people would call on plane, what club path would you have? Into, out, out, in, straight. What club path would you have? More swings coming at you today. Fins, high shots, and overdraws this player's complaining of. We have some sun today. That's nice to see. The Academy Award nominated actor, Coach Lockie. <laughs> I'd like to thank my uh, mum and dad uh, for all their help throughout my life. I'm turning it off now. <laughs> Let's just take a look at today's swing. I'm gonna go line on the club here and line on his backside. He complains of hooking over hooking shots. He also talked about rolling wrists, those kind of things. We see a very big steepening in the shaft, pushing forward of the backside classic kind of efforts to control face the path would lie. That's what we need to fix. We then see follow throughs where the face really wants to turn down to the ground. What I would do with students like this, who obviously have good range of movement, they have speed and look like he's got coordination skills, gain some kind of consistencies in this overhook that he talks about and some control over it. We're going to look at trying to get him to create maybe some fade ideas and see if that turns his hook into a gentle draw or possibly for him might actually get him hitting some straight shots to some little gentle cuts. When he control the path and the dynamic lie a little better uh, for fades and for draws, he will be a more skilled player. Quite a few jobs to do today. I'm off out. Tea for tonight. Picking up presents for all her. Birthday girl. And I might get an electric bike. What do you think of that? I want to do some exercise, but I don't want to do too much exercise. <laughs> Blooming raining now. This is a great drill to help you with that high handle and that turning over of that face that's causing those left shots for you. 56 degree wedge, simple chip shot. You could do this on the range. I want you to hit some chip shots where you feel that you finish with the handle of the club left and relatively low. So basically your hands are coming left. So you can see I'm standing square on getting my handle and the head to finish the left. Obviously head starts here, finishing here, more left. Hand start here, finish here, more left. You've got this desire to want to go this way. So get that handle coming up as the club rotates. I want you to learn how to hit straight shots with the club traveling left post impact. Basically to hit a straight shot, that club would be going from in to back to zero and then back to in. You've got this desire to push it out to the right or certainly the handle out to the right. So aiming at my flag there now, I'm gonna stand square on. That chip shot's gone pretty straight. Got my handle finished left. So I would hit, if I was on a range, maybe two chip shots, you can do this with a six iron. Chip it out there with a the handle low and then literally pull your next ball in and try and hit Four shots, feeling that handle finishing low and left before going over your shoulder. It'll really challenge your idea of how far left your hands can go while the club is still moving out because when you're hitting good shots, basically the handle is moving in and up to push the head out to the ball. Can you see that? So the handle here, if I got it lined here with this lens, it's going up and in and that is pushing that club out. Getting the feeling of that handle moving left isn't going to drag the path left and for you it's about trying to get that very upright shaft angle delivery out of your game. That is an electric bike. Let's answer your questions. 
Hi there, Mark. Hey. My name is Arno from the Netherlands. I was wondering what your thoughts are on these uh, devices that connect to your uh, club or glove that measure your swing speed and uh, related stuff, like uh, Zap Golf or Swing Talk. So what do you think? Are they uh, useful? Are they worth investing into? Thanks, man. Cheers, bro. No problem, bro. I get this question a lot, and I've tried to avoid answering it a lot in the past because it, I don't want to give these brands kind of any negative feedback in a way that might harm their business because they're startups, they're trying, those kind of things. But look, here we go. I'm not a huge fan on many levels. If you want accurate data, unfortunately, you do have to spend the money, certainly on face and club. Ball, slightly different. You can get some good ball tracking devices for less money, kind of more home use. But still, I see people using that data or trying to use that data from pros to amateurs just wildly in a way that doesn't actually help them. For me, I'm a bigger fan of as accurate data as you can get for the money we can spend with some professional advice because it's not the data. The data is a part of the puzzle. It's how the pro, the person interpreting that data, communicates that information to you in a way that you can fix and improve your game. I've used enough systems and some present fantastic data, but what happens is then very hard to apply any of that data to make a player better it's hard to change any of the numbers you know, certainly when you start looking at body stuff that's often the way for people so for me I'm not a massive massive fan which is why I've always kind of stepped away from them and I don't particularly really keen on doing reviews on them because it just doesn't seem fair to kind of wreck someone's business with a poor review so I choose not to review it here we go It's assisting me. It's now not assisting me. I'm doing it all myself. Just a little bit of exercise. I've now been going uphill for about five minutes. Just a little bit tired, not a lot tired. So simple indoor tip. What I want you to do, I've got my iron and I've got this cushion here, a 45 degree angle to where one of these lines on the carpet would be. So right angle to my uh, ball to target line. So I'm gonna demo some follow throughs where I try to line up the line of my shaft and the face with that pillow on the way through. It's gonna feel quite different to how you wanna get to this post impact point. So I'm gonna turn through stopping here, trying to get, you can see the shaft and the face lining up more with that pillow. You want to get the handle high pushing forward face wrapping over which gets the shaft then in turn the face not really sinking to that pillow. We want it more here, head over taking handle lower, face doing natural rotation. Now you could do this at the range, you could put a line, a club down at this 45 degree angle, you don't need the pillow, and you could get a ball out in front of you at the range, demo the feeling of that handle, that face turning more left, not rotating, more so more this way to go left, Get that feeling of your body rotating and that handle coming through and then try to hit some shots that way. I think to you it'll just feel very cutty, you know, quite fady, but that's a good thing because you look very keen to push everything out to the right and all it's doing is raising this handle up which then in turn encourages loads of rotation of that face and there goes your misses. Two great drills should help. There we go, thanks for watching. Electric. Tuesday night, tonight is... It's Fajitas night. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Send me those video questions. More video questions needed, please. And we'll see you all tomorrow with an excited Orla. It's her birthday. Can you stop putting that face on the face?